Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 8, Lecture 1. The Immune System and Host Response The only reason that the human body survives is that it has a protective defense system that is very effective at recognizing and fighting disease-causing microorganisms. The immune system is a complex body defense system that protects the body against bacteria, viruses, fungi, toxins, parasites, and even cancer. The prime purpose of the immune system it is, is to defend the life of the individual by identifying foreign substances in the body and developing a defense against them. The way an individual's body responds to the infection is known as the host response. The body responds by sending certain cells to the infection site and producing biochemical substances to counteract the foreign invaders. Loss of immune function is deadly to the body. An example is AIDS, where the HIV disables a specific group of immune cells, and HIV-positive individuals often develop infections from mi microorganisms that rarely cause infections in persons with healthy immune systems. An overzealous immune system is also a problem. The immune system can become so intense in its response that it begins to harm the body that it is trying to protect. This overreaction which harms the body's own cells and tissues is referred to as an autoimmune response. An overzealous response of the immune system occurs in periodontitis, which puts periodontitis in the category of an autoimmune disease. The immune system is a complex defense system that protects the body and defends the life of the individual. The host response is the way that an individual's body responds to the infection. Leukocytes are white blood cells which act as independent, single-cell organisms that can move through tissues and capture microorganisms on their own. Two types of leukocytes that are important in periodontal disease are polymorphonuclear leukocytes, also known as PMNs and neutrophils, and monocytes, slash macrophages. Phagocytosis is the process whereby the leukocytes engulf and digest microorganisms. This is known as cell eating. Polymorphonuclear leukocytes are the first line of defense against invasion by foreign organisms. They capture and destroy bacterial invaders. These shells are, cells are short-lived and they die when they become engorged with bacteria. They are attracted to the site of injury or infection by a process called chemotaxis. PMNs contain many strong bactericidal and digestive enzymes called lysosomes. Periodontal pathogens are most effectively destroyed by PMNs. Monocytes, or slash macrophages, are called monocytes when they are found in the bloodstream, and they are called macrophages when they are found in the tissue. They are slower to arrive at the infection site than the PMNs. Their function is to surround and destroy the bacteria. They are the long-lived cells seen in chronic inflammation. Here is a scanning electron micrograph of a human macrophage. Lymphocytes are small leukocytes or white blood cells that help defend the body. The two main types are B cells and T cells. B cells, once activated, make millions of antibodies and pour them into the bloodstream. They can differentiate into two types of B cells, 
plasma cells and memory cells. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins. One end of the Y binds to the outside of the B cell, while the other end of the Y binds to the microorganism and helps to kill it. Antibodies are known collectively as immunoglobulins. Five major classes of immunoglobulins are A, D, E, G, and M. T lymphocytes mainly function to intensify the response of other immune cells, such as macrophages and B lymphocytes, to the bacterial infection. T cells produce substances called cytokines that further stimulate the immune response. A cytokine is a general name for any protein that is secreted by cells and affects the behavior of nearby cells. The complement system is a complex series of proteins circulating in the blood that work to facilitate phagocytosis of bacteria and can kill bacteria directly by forming pores in the bacterial cell membranes. Destructions of pathogens involve components of the complement system which can destroy certain microorganisms directly and for this task it creates a protein called the membrane attack complex. This protein can puncture cell membranes of certain bacteria. This puncturing or breaking of cell membranes is referred to as lysis. Opsonization of pathogens. The complement system facilitates the capture and destruction of bacteria by phagocytes. This process is called op opsonization of pathogens. Complement components coat the surface of the bacteria allowing the phagocytes to recognize, engulf, and destroy the bacteria. Opsonization is the most important action of the complement system. The complement system can recruit additional phagocytic cells to the site of an infection. The complement system acts as a housekeeper for the body by removing immune complexes from circulation. See figure 8.7, page 144 of your textbook for more information on this image. A recap of the immune system. Immune cells that are important in the control of periodontal disease are PMNs and macrophages, which capture and destroy bacteria, B lymphocytes, which make antibodies, and T lymphocytes, which intensify the response of other immune cells. The complement system is a complex series of proteins circulating in the blood that works to facilitate phagocytosis or kill the bacteria directly. To fight an infection, leukocytes travel through the bloodstream. The thin layer of epithelial cells that line the interior surface of blood vessels is called the endothelium. Near the infection site, leukocytes push their way between the endothelial cells and enter the connective tissue. This process is called extravasation. This process is also called transendothelial migration. Chemotaxis is the process whereby leukocytes enter the connective tissue and are attracted to the site of the infection in response to biochemical compounds released by the invading bacteria. See figure 8.9 on page 146 for more information. Phagocytosis, again, is the process by which leukocytes engulf or surround and digest microorganisms. 
See figure 8.10 on page 147 for more information on the steps in phagocytosis. Migration is the process whereby leukocytes travel through the bloodstream to fight an infection. Transendothelial migration is where the leukocytes push their way between the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and enter the connective tissue. Chemotaxis is the process whereby leukocytes are attracted to the site of the infection in response to biochemical compounds released by the invading bacteria. Phagocytosis is the process by which leukocytes engulf and digest microorganisms. Inflammation and the inflammatory response. The body's reaction to injury or invasion by disease producing organisms is inflammation. Inflammation focuses the host defense components at the site of an infection to eliminate microorganisms and heal damaged tissue. See figure 8.11, page 148, for more information. Inflammatory biochemical mediators are biologically active compounds secreted by cells that activate the body's inflammatory response. Mediators of importance in periodontitis include cytokines, prostaglandins, and matrix metalloproteinases. Leukocytes secrete cytokines that play a major role in regulating the behavior of immune cells. Chemokines are a subgroup of cytokines that cause additional immune cells to be attracted to the site of an infection or injury. There are two stages of inflammation, acute and chronic. Acute inflammation is a short-term, normal process that protects and heals the body. The acute inflammatory process is achieved by the increased movement of plasma and leukocytes from the blood into the injured tissues. See figure 8.12 on page 149 for more information. Five classic signs of acute inflammation include heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. The acute inflammatory response. Blood vessels near the infected site become more permeable. PMNs are the first cells to arrive at the site. PMNs release cytokines. The liver produces C-reactive protein. If the body succeeds in eliminating all the microorganisms, the tissue will heal and inflammation will cease. If the acute inflammatory responses are not effective in controlling the invading microorganisms, the inflammatory response becomes chronic. Chronic inflammation is a long-lived, out-of-control inflammatory response that continues for more than a few weeks. It is a pathological condition that can destroy healthy tissue and cause more damage than the original problem. The classic warning signs seen in acute inflammation usually are absent in chronic inflammation. The problem may go unnoticed by the patient. Clinically, pain is absent. Chronic inflammation occurs because the body is unable to rid itself of the invading organisms. The invading microorganisms are persistent and stimulate an exaggerated immune response. When inflammation becomes chronic, the inflammatory response can become so intense that it does permanent damage to the body tissues. This is the case in periodontitis. This concludes Chapter 8, Lecture 1.